Isn't Sarah Bird amazing? I love that she and her team are thinking about things at level 100 that we're just starting to think about around here at level one. So definitely go and subscribe to the White Noise GitHub if you're working on anything related to AI so you can benefit from their learning without having to learn it all by yourself. So speaking of awesome, next you're gonna learn a lot about Azure SQL, but just pro tip, did you know that you can take an Azure SQL DB and generate a power app from it? and suddenly you've got a cool UI without having to build it yourself. I know, that is awesome and fun. Okay, so I would love to introduce you to our amazing next remote host, Anna Hoffman, who's gonna take us through some Azure SQL game changers for devs. Anna, you're around, oh, there she is. There she is. Hey. Hey, Donna. How's it going? Good, how about yourself? It's such a good day, oh my gosh, I've learned so much, mind blown. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Donna. Um, hey, y'all. Welcome to this live segment. I'm Anna Hoffman from the Azure SQL engineering team, and I'm here to talk about databases and developers. And really my goal is to share how Azure SQL is changing the game for developers with some of our latest innovations. And when I thought about this, I thought, who better to ask than Asad Khan, the partner director over all of SQL Server and Azure SQL. Asad, welcome and thanks so much for joining us today. How are you doing in this virtual world? Thank you, Anna. Uh, pleased to be here. Uh, mostly staying home, as you know, <laughs> trying to make the best use of the current situation <laughs> by spending more time with kids. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're going to get right into questions and some demos. So the first version of SQL Server uh, was released about 30 years ago, and the first version of Azure SQL Database came out about 10 years ago. Now, Asad, based on your experience kind of building and leading the product, can you tell us a little more about the evolution of SQL Server and Azure SQL? Yeah, sure. So you're right, Anna. It has been 30 years since the first version of SQL Server came out. And SQL Server is still the most deployed database in the world. 98 of the top 100 Fortune companies run their mission-critical applications on SQL Server. And in the cloud, SQL is the largest, has the largest footprint compared to any data platform. The reason for this continued success is because when it comes to our investment philosophy, it's not about creating the best relational engine. Although we have the best engine, but that's not the primary goal. SQL at its core is about enabling developers and companies to be successful by harnessing the power of data. And in order to do so, we are not afraid of innovating, both inside and outside the relational engine. Although SQL is a matured product, but we never constrain ourselves by what already exists. We are willing to break the bounds of existing system and start all over again. Core values should not change. The core values that SQL stood for 30 years ago are the same that we believe in today. Core values are the defining principles that are non-negotiable, such as data integrity, security, price per, and developer productivity. But beyond that, there is nothing that confines us to what we do. Let me give you, give you two examples. Today, we announced the public preview of Azure SQL Edge. In the design phase of this product, we talked to hundreds of IoT developers and learned that just offering the relational engine is not enough. Rather, we have to do a lot of innovation out, outside of the relational engine. If you look at this release, you will notice that not only Azure SQL Edge brings the same SQL Server relational engine to the edge, but it also comes with three additional components, a native millisecond machine learning scoring capability at the edge, a time series database, and full data streaming support. Together, they make a complete data platform for the edge, a platform that is not limited to relational capabilities. Because of these new additions, Azure SQL Edge is off to a great start. We already have multiple case studies on how enterprises across various verticals are using them to run intelligent edge application. My favorite one is how Carl Zeiss uses Azure SQL Edge to do machine learning at the edge for manufacturing their high precision optical devices. I would say the best example that shows that we don't think of SQL as an engine, rather as a full platform, is by looking at the design for SQL Server big data clusters. It's built by keeping developers at, at the late, uh, uh, up to the latest industry scenarios front and center. 
As the data link became mainstream, we made sure SQL not only embraces it, but differentiate itself by closing the chasm that exists between structured and unstructured data. In the SQL big data clusters, we integrated the SQL engine, Spark, data lakes to offer a fully unified data platform that serves your OLTP workload as well as enable customers to do analytics at scale. Thanks, Asad. Um, it seems like, you know, SQL has been doing a lot from the edge to the ground all the way to the cloud. And, you know, when some of our customers and developers uh, start to think about cloud, there are a lot of different databases and platforms that they can choose for either their new workloads or existing applications. Why should developers choose Azure SQL? Yeah, good question. So. In recent years, we are seeing a rise of the full stack developers. These developers are looking for the most reliable, highly secure and limitless database. On top of that, they want consistency and portability of their applications. Things should not break whether that app is running in the cloud, on-prem or even at the edge. Lastly, developers don't want to be bogged down by hundreds of knobs to get the best performance out of the database. Azure SQL at its core is about enabling developers and companies to be successful by harnessing the power of data. In Azure SQL, we have built in features that make it the best data platform for building data centric applications. For example, Azure SQL has the most comprehensive security features all the way from network security, access management, threat detection, and information protection. Year over year, industry analysts and security experts rank Azure SQL as the most secure data platform. We have years of investment in the intelligent query processor. Customers don't have to worry about writing performant queries anymore or query performance degradation. We have machine learning models that automatically optimize the query plan and add or drop indices to provide the best query performance. In Azure today, we have over 6 million customer SQL databases and over 10 trillion queries run every day. This scale is testament to the platform stability and the broad adoption of Azure SQL data platform. In the last two to three years, the biggest investment went into making Azure SQL limitless. Azure SQL hyperscale is the only relational database in the world that can scale one database to support 200 terabyte plus of data. If you, and if you look at the next level of detail, we have hundreds of features that makes developer more productive. For example, change tracking is a lightweight solution that provides an efficient change tracking mechanism for applications. Typically to enable applications to query for changes to data in a database and access information that is related to the changes, Application developers have to implement custom change tracking mechanism. Features like change tracking in Azure SQL makes it really easy to build mobile applications. Thanks, Asad. You know, I've actually been working on something myself and I would love to share it with you all. Um, you know, Asad, I don't know if you knew this, but I am actually a pretty big runner and I like to go for a run every morning. So we built this simple application. You can see it here, and it's basically there to track my runs. And it tracks a few different pieces of information, and I can even start a new workout. Now, I'll start to this workout, and it'll start to log it. Now, it's going to store this data locally while I'm running, which helps in conserving my battery. When I complete my run, it's going to send this data to Azure to be stored and processed. If I flip over to the portal, what you're going to see is this hyperscale database, which is logging all the activities for all the users of my app. And you can see it's currently about 13 terabytes in size and can grow as big as it needs to. So hyperscale is going to allow me to get all the features and functionality of Azure SQL database and limitless storage, plus some added benefits around read scale and size of data type of operations. Now, one common thing we notice in the app is that many people, um, myself included, uh, tend to forget to select the end workout button. 
So one piece of this processing is going to include using a machine learning model to determine where a workout actually ended. We'll then update the data. As a simple example, I'm just going to update the steps from a workout I did yesterday. Now, when the data in hyperscale changes, I want to update the records in my app too. I don't want to repull all the data for the workouts I already have, or even for the single workout I just edited. I wanna do as little data movement as possible to just update what I don't have locally. Change tracking in Azure SQL is going to allow me to do exactly this without having to develop a bunch of extra code to make it work. So here I created a stored procedure which I can access from an API and it basically returns the change table from a specific version. And the beauty here is that it can return JSON in the format that I specify, which is gonna make it so much easier for me to process. So if I look at an example, here I can call the API and specify the next version to get the latest updates. Now what I'm gonna see is only that update operation we just performed. This is gonna help keep me running more efficiently and in a time where phone battery is everything is pretty great. Um, if I go back to my app and refresh, I can see that that up workout was updated in blue. So with Azure SQL Database, and in this case, Hyperscale, you can leverage a lot of the capabilities that are built into this SQL engine, Assad, that you mentioned to help you build more intelligent and faster applications. So that's certainly a game changer. Um, certainly a game changer. But there's another trend that's been emerging, and that's the notion of serverless. And really, this has been emerging in a big way. So Asad, can you tell us, you know, why did we invest in serverless, and what doors do you think this opens? Yeah, sure. So Azure SQL Serverless offers the same SQL Server that developers love, but we have taken away the worry of managing the infrastructure. You only pay when you run the query, but on top of that, the underlying infrastructure management layer is intelligent. It continuously monitors the usage. The system detects as soon as an app needs more resources and we scale up or scale down both the underlying compute as well as the memory resources. And on top of that, the machine learning models that govern the resource allocation get retrained over time and become even more intelligent to ad adapt to your application patterns. Azure SQL Serverless lets you cost optimize in unpredictable usage patterns. And I would say that it is the number one choice for developers in the, especially in the dev and test environments. Yeah, definitely. Actually, Asad, here in this app I showed earlier, I'm using serverless for dev test for my app. So I'm going to go ahead and commit and push these changes up to GitHub where I'm leveraging GitHub actions and I'll show you what I'm changing. So I want to add temperature information to my run so I can do some further analysis later. So I added these two scripts. One adds the temperature column to my training session table, and one just updates that stored procedure to return the temperature data in JSON as well. Now, if I switch over to GitHub, I can see how I set this environment up just a little bit earlier, and it ran the first three scripts. If I go back to GitHub Actions, I can see a new build should have kicked off, which it did, which we just pushed up, and GitHub Actions is great for this. Now, while this runs, I wanna talk about the database. Now, for dev purposes, I don't want all of the data in hyperscale, but I do need a database with the same functionality so I can run testing and have a good idea of how my app's gonna run in production. And for this, I'm using Azure SQL Database Serverless. Since I'm only working on this every now and then, I set my serverless database to automatically pause after one hour. During the pause time of inactivity, I only have to pay for storage, which is going to keep my dev costs low. Now, when I'm using the database, it's going to scale on a per second basis, which is going to allow me to get the exact CPU or memory that I need when I need it. And this is great. I'm only going to be billed for the CPU I actually use. Finally, if I switch back to GitHub, I can see that my uh, build has completed and it's run those new scripts so I can get to developing. So serverless, GitHub Actions are all there to help you with your dev environments. 
And, you know, Asad, we've seen and heard a lot today, but, you know, it leads me to my next question, my last question. What's next? Can you tell us, you know, kind of what's next in the vision for Azure SQL? Yeah, sure. So there are three specific areas where we are heavily investing. Um, we want, first, we want to empower the developers by taking away the worry of managing databases, whether it be the infrastructure, the query processor, or the database engine itself. And all three should automatically adapt to the application needs without the developer or a DBA intervention. You can already see the early signs with SQL serverless and the intelligent query processing features. But in the next couple of years, we will take it to a whole new level. And the second is our commitment to limitless database. We will bring hyperscale to every deployment option of SQL Server. Developers should not worry about the size of the data or the compute needed to process that data. Lastly, uh, we will remove any differences that exist between the cloud and on-prem deployments. When you deploy SQL, it doesn't matter where it runs. We will bring the same versionless, cloud-managed, and centrally governed SQL, SQL databases everywhere. So in summary, I would say, if you have bet on SQL, we will not let you down. Wow. That's that's a lot of stuff coming down to the pipeline, a lot of things to look forward to. Thanks so much, Asad. Remember, we've got a number of digital breakouts on the topic of Azure SQL, so be sure to check out the session scheduler at mybuild.microsoft.com for more. Now, back over to you at the live stage. <laughs> Thank you, Anna. Hello. So, how cool was that? Did, did you like that line? If you bet on SQL, we will not let you down. I like it. How's everyone feeling? You know, end of the day crew, getting tired, middle of the night crew, hopefully you're asleep. Sydney crew, you're contemplating a third cup of coffee. Wake up, get some snacks. We found snacks. I found old school Little Debbie snack cakes, I know. So weird, so cool. Okay, 